In the last lecture, you learned about multi-protocol and the security style settings on volumes and queue trees. You also learned about the fact that if a Windows user wants to access a file or folder which has got Unix style permissions set on there, then they're going to need to be mapped as a Unix user. And if a Unix user wants to access a file or folder which has got NTFS style permissions on there, they're going to need to be mapped to a Windows user. In this lecture, I'll show you how to configure those mappings. So our multi-protocol name mappings in ONTAP are used to map a Windows user to a Unix user or vice versa. Use a Windows to Unix mapping to allow a Windows user to access a Unix security style file or folder and use a Unix to Windows mapping to allow a Unix user to access a Windows NTFS security style file or folder. Our name mappings use regular expressions. What regular expressions are really useful for is matching a string of characters, which may be a complex string of characters that you then want to take some other action on. And regular expressions were not just used in NetApp on tap, they're used in lots of different areas in IT. For example, they're used in IP telephony for configuring your dial plan. They're also used in firewalls and intrusion prevention systems to match a particular string of characters that would signify an attack. And they're really useful for doing the name mappings for multi-protocol and on tap. You'll see why as we go through this lecture. So in this lecture, what I'm going to do is explain this with examples because it's the easiest way to learn it. So our first name mapping example is a simple one. We're going to map the Windows user of flatbox backslash Bob to the Unix user Bob Jones. When a Windows user in Active Directory logs into the ONTAP system, it's going to send the username in the format of the domain name and then a backslash and then the username. So here in this example, the Windows username is Bob and they're a member of the Flatbox domain. And in this example, the Windows user Bob wants to access files or folders which have got Unix style permissions on there and he wants to access them with the username of Bob Jones. So we're going to configure a name mapping to map flatbox backslash Bob to the Unix user of Bob Jones. And then whenever Bob is trying to access a file or folder with those Unix style permissions on there, he's gonna look like he is the Unix user Bob Jones. And if the Unix user Bob Jones gets access to the file or folder, then so will the Windows user. So in the examples here, the scenario is that we've got a company and they've got their ONTAP storage system. They've got an SVM on the storage system, which is accessed by users working on both Windows machines and Linux machines. So sometimes Bob is working on his Windows machine. Sometimes he's working on his Linux machine. Either time, he needs access to the same files and folders. So we need to configure multi-protocol to support that. And for this first example, it's so that Bob can get access to files and folders which have got Unix style permissions set on there when he's coming in from his Windows machine. So we need to do the name mapping for that. So first thing that we need to do is configure what we're mapping from. So look for the flat box backslash Bob. We need to match on that and then we're gonna make the change to it. So the first part is what are we looking to match on? So that is the, the pattern. The first part of the pattern is flatbox. So the whole thing is flatbox backslash Bob. The first part of that is flatbox and it is just typed in. So when you're configuring this, you type it in literally as flatbox in capital letters. The next part of the pattern is the backslash. Now, you know how I said that these mappings use regular expressions? Well, regular expressions use wildcards to signify different things. For example, a dot 
indicates a single character, which could be any character from A to Z or any number from 0 through to 9. And the backslash is actually another regular expression wildcard. So what we do here is to say literally a backslash, we say backslash backslash. Because what the backslash wildcard means is the next character, take it literally, it doesn't actually mean the wildcard. So for example, if you said backslash dot, what that means is, is the dot is literally a dot. It doesn't mean any character. So if you say backslash dot, it means literally a dot. If you say just dot, then it means any character. Okay, so here we want to say literally a slash, so we have to say backslash, backslash. That means literally a slash. And then the next part of the pattern is Bob, so we can just type that in as Bob. And at that point, we have come up with the pattern. This is what we are matching on. So this is a, a screenshot of where we would do this in the GUI in System Manager. We would go into the SVM, and then in the SVM, we would go to the name mappings for that SVM. Say we wanted to add one. First off, importantly, you need to specify the direction. This first example, we are mapping a Windows user to a Unix user. This is where a Windows user wants to access a file or folder, which has got Unix style permissions on there. So we have to specify the direction is Windows to Unix. You can have multiple different rules. So the position starts at one, the next rule would be two, the next one would be three, etc. They're read from top to bottom. This is the first rule that we're creating. So the position is one. And then the pattern that we're matching on is flat box backslash backslash Bob. Next thing that we need to do is specify what we are going to replace this with. And in this example, the Unix username that we want to map Bob to is the Unix user of Bob Jones. So we need to configure the replacement string next. And the replacement string is just literally Bob Jones. So when we configure the rule, we say the direction, Windows to Unix. We specify the position, that's the index number. The pattern here is flat box backslash backslash Bob, which means literally flat box backslash Bob. And then we're replacing that with Bob Jones. And that is us done. Now, I said that in the scenario that Bob is sometimes working on his Linux machine and he's sometimes working on his Windows machine. And whenever he's on either of those, because he's working on a mixed mode security style volume, if he sets the permissions, well, if he sets the permissions from his Linux machine, then that file or folder is going to have Unix style permissions on there. If he sets the permissions from his Windows machine, then that file or folder is going to have Windows NTFS style permissions on there. He wants to be able to do that. And he also wants to access the files or folders from either his Windows or his Unix machine. So we need to do mappings in both directions here. He's not going to be just working on his Windows machine and accessing Unix style files and folders. Also, he might be working on his Linux machine and accessing Windows security style files and folders. So we need to do the mapping in both directions. When you configure a mapping, it works in one direction only. So if you want the mapping to happen in both directions, you need to configure two different rules for that, one in each direction. So that's what we're going to do here. We configured the Windows to Unix mapping already. Here, we're going to configure the Unix to Windows mapping. Did I say that the right way around? We did Windows to Unix. Now we're doing Unix to Windows. Okay, so we do Unix to Windows. The position is one. So your Unix to Windows rules and your Windows to Unix rules are separate. So you can have position one for Unix to Windows. You can also have position one for Windows to Unix as well. That does not conflict with each other because we're going in the different directions. So this is a Unix to Windows rule. We've configured this as position one. The pattern that we're matching on is the Unix username, which is Bob Jones. And the replacement is flat box backslash backslash Bob, which means literally flat box backslash Bob. Okay, so that is how you can configure one-to-one -one mappings between your Unix and your Windows users. But if you had to do this for 500 different users, it would not be much fun configuring 1,000 rules, 500 in both directions, right? So this is where our regular expressions, where our wildcards can come in handy. It means that 
usually we can just configure a couple of rules, one in each direction, rather than having to do one for every single user. So let's have a look at an example of that next. And in this example, it's where our Windows usernames and our Unix usernames have the same name. So in the previous example, the Windows username was Bob and the Unix username was Bob Jones. They were different, right? This next example is they're both the same. So here, the Unix username is Bob and the Windows username is Bob as well. So to configure the mapping for Apple, what we're going to need to do is with the username, because that includes the domain name at the start, we need to strip that domain name off. So when the Unix user is accessing Windows, if Unix username is Bob, we need to change that to flatbox backslash Bob. And when the Windows user is accessing Unix files and folders, we need to strip off the flat box. So it needs to change from flat box backslash Bob to just plain Bob. So how would we do that? Well, first off, looking at the pattern that we're mapping from, here we're going from Windows to Unix. So the username that they're coming in as is flat box backslash and then their username. And their username could be anything. We've got 500 different users. So what does the pattern look like? It starts off with flat box. The next part is a backslash. Again, we're using regular expressions and the backslash is a wild card itself. What it means is the next character take its literal meaning. So to say literally a backslash, we have to say backslash, backslash. And then to match on the username, well, the username could be anything and it could be any length. Like it might be a three character username like Bob, or it could be a four character username like John, J-O-H-N, or it could be any length of characters for that user's name. So here we need to match any string of characters and it has to be variable length, but it needs to have at least one character in there. So the way we do that is we say a dot first. A dot means a single character. And then a plus, what a plus means is zero or more repetitions of the previous character. So because we've got a dot there, it means it needs to have a character there. It won't match a null string of just nothing. And then because we've got the plus, that means zero or more repetitions of any single character. So this will match any username of any length. So we've got the username done. Now, when we map that Windows user to the Unix user, we need to just strip off the flat box backslash part and we need to keep their username. So for example, if the Windows user was flat box backslash Bob, then we need to convert that to just plain Bob. So the username part, we need to keep that. We need to retain it to, retain it, to copy it into what the replacement will be. And the way that you do that is you put it inside brackets. So the dot slash will catch the username, whatever that is. We want to keep it for the replacement, so we put it inside brackets. Next up, we are ready to configure the replacement. So just before we look at that, if we're configuring this in the GUI, we would say it's Windows to Unix. We already had our first rule. So this is going to be rule number two. And then the pattern was flat box, backslash, backslash, open brackets, dot plus, close the brackets. Next up, we need to figure out what the replacement is going to be. And we already said that we were going to copy, retain, whatever the dot plus was. We did that by putting it in brackets. The replacement, we say backslash one. What backslash one means is copy down whatever was within the first set of brackets. So if the username was flatbox backslash Bob, then the replacement will be Bob. If the pattern was flatbox backslash John, the replacement will be John. Okay, so that covers mapping our Windows users to a Unix user of the same name so that Windows users can access those files and folders that have got Unix style permissions how about coming back in the other direction? Because as I mentioned earlier, these mappings only work in one direction. That will allow your Windows users to access the Unix files and folders, but how about when the users are on their Linux machines and they want to access files and folders with the Windows NTFS style permissions? Well, we're gonna need a name mapping for that as well. 
So the way that we're going to configure that one, again, first up is figure out what the pattern is going to be. So here we're looking for a Unix username and that Unix username could be anything, any length of characters. It could be Bob, it could be John, it could be Marcus, etc. So the way that we match a variable length string of characters is with dot plus. And we're going to want to copy this down into the replacement. So we put that inside brackets. And then the replacement is going to be flatbox, the Windows domain name. And then we need a backslash. So we say backslash, backslash. And then to copy the username down into here, we say backslash one. So if the Unix username was Bob, this will be replaced with flatbox backslash Bob. So this maps the Unix username to a Windows username of the same name. Now, if you remember from the last lesson, you don't actually have to configure that if you want to do that. That's because if you look back at the flow chart again, you'll see this one here, if no mapping, try the Windows username. So that example two that I just showed you, that happens by default anyway. So if you're wondering, well, if that happens anyway, why are you showing us? It's because I wanted to show you how the regular expressions work in the name mappings. Because I'm going to do another example in a second, which is a bit more of a complicated use of those regular expressions. So we do have that default mapping from Windows to Unix, and we've also got the mapping from Unix to Windows as well. So again, that last example, that happens by default anyway. But what if the Windows username and the Unix username are not the same, they are different? So the scenario here is the same, where we've got a user, Bob, for example. Sometimes he's working on his Linux machine. Sometimes he's working on his Windows machine, and he needs to access the same files and folders in the same volume. So we've got that volume set to the mixed security style. Whichever permissions are going to be on there are going to be dependent on what type of machine set those permissions. But we want to be able to access those same files and folders from both types of machines. And in this example, the usernames are not the same. So this will be for historical reasons. This company, they weren't thinking of this was going to be a requirement later. So probably the company already existed. They already had Windows and they already had Linux as well before they even got their NetApp system. And because that was the case, they never thought about having to do multi-protocol mappings. And for this company, the format of the Windows username is the domain name, which is flatbox and then a backslash and then the first initial and then a dot and then the surname. So for example, the Windows username is flatbox backslash j.smith, but the Unix username is just the first initial and then the surname, there's no dot in between. So you can see the Windows username is j.smith, the Unix username is jsmith. And we've got the same situation where we want to have mappings for 500 different users. Well, at first glance, you would think that you're going to have to manually configure a separate mapping for every single user. And obviously that would not be much fun to configure. But because we have regular expressions, you can actually do this with just a couple of rules. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, this is going to really show the power of regular expressions. So we want to do that mapping from all our different users from the format of first initial dot surname to just first initial surname. So when we're doing the mapping from Windows to Unix, the first part of the pattern is going to be the domain name, which is Flatbox. The next part of the pattern is the backslash. But because this is a regular expression, we want to say literally backslash. So we say backslash backslash. Then the next part of the pattern is going to be the user's first initial. That could be any character. So to match on any character, we use the regular expression wildcard of a dot. And when we do the replacement, we're going to want to carry their first initial down into what we're replacing it with. So we're going to put that dot 
inside brackets. The next thing that we have and what we're matching on is the dot after the first initial. So this is literally a dot now. So rather than just saying dot, we say backslash dot to mean literally a dot, not any character. And then next up, we have got their surname, which could be any length of characters. And the way that we signify that with regular expressions is dot plus. Again, we want to carry that surname down into the replacement. So we put that inside brackets as well. So you were maybe wondering why before we had the replacement of backslash one, and I said that it's going to carry down what was in the first set of brackets. Well, yeah, it's possible that you can have multiple sets of brackets like we have here. We've got the first dot is in the first set of brackets. That's their first initial. And then their surname is in the second set of brackets. We need to specify these separately because we're going to strip out this dot here, which is in the middle. So that's the pattern. That's what we're looking to match on. So you can see here we've put the pattern in and then what are we going to replace that with? That's what we're going to do next. Well, the replacement is going to be their first initial, which was in the first set of brackets. So we say backslash one. And then after that, the next thing is their surname, which was in the second set of brackets. So that is backslash two. So if the Windows username was, for example, flatbox backslash b dot jones that is going to replace it with just plain b jones and here is a screenshot of configuring that rule in the system manager gui so the direction is windows to unix for this example i've just reset it we're back at one again the pattern flat box then backslash backslash then in brackets a dot and then backslash dot to mean literally a dot and then in brackets, dot plus for the surname, replacing that with backslash one, the first initial, and then backslash to the surname. You've maybe noticed that the screenshot says flat box A rather than flat box. That's just because this is a screenshot from the actual lab exercise. When you do the lab exercise after this, this is the mapping that I'm going to have you actually do in that lab. Okay, so that covered the mapping that's going to cover all of our Windows users to the Unix username. Again, what if the Unix users are also going to be accessing files and folders with the NTFS security style? Then again, we need to configure a name mapping in the opposite direction because name mappings just work in one direction. They don't do the opposite rule as well. You need to do a separate rule for that. So here, the pattern is going to be when we're looking at the Unix username, well, we need to copy their first initial over into the Windows username. So we're going to put in a dot, which will match any character for their first initial. And we are going to carry that down into the replacement. So we put that inside brackets. The next thing that we have is the dot plus to signify the variable length of characters for their surname. We need to carry that down into the replacement as well. So we're going to put that in brackets as well. So the pattern that we're matching on is open brackets dot, close brackets, then open brackets dot plus and close brackets. Next up, we need to configure the replacement string. The replacement string, well, they need to be converted to their Windows username, including the domain name. So our domain name for the example is Flatbox. So the start of the replacement is Flatbox. The next thing that we have is a backslash. We mean literally a backslash. So we have to say backslash, backslash. The next thing that we have is their first initial. So we say backslash one. The next thing that we have in the Windows username is a dot between their initial and the surname. So we put the dot in. Again, that's a regular expression. Here we mean literally a dot. So we say backslash dot. And then the last part is we need to copy down their surname, which was in the second set of brackets. So we say backslash two. And here is what the entire mapping looks like. And there you can see a screenshot of doing it in the GUI. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, 
then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.